Welcome to College Football Roundtable, your source for college football coverage, including major storylines, playoffs, can't miss game previews, and picks each week. Join your hosts, Dan, Rob, and Jordan at the roundtable for a show unlike anything else. As for Football presents the College Football Roundtable. spirit mission because yeah. the kids took paper and got it shredded and on one side it said go army and on the back side it said beat air force now imagine it on like one inch pieces of shredded paper everywhere throughout your room oh. like it was in the laundry bin it was underneath the mattresses it was everywhere the guy we had the yearling set up a roster to go wake him up every hour and tell him how many hours till the army beat the air force <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> his roommate was like you better not wake me I was like, yeah you wake me up you're gonna die that's tragic all right well we are live and so we'll get started uh trigger joe is not here he is in the middle of a tornado recovery so i think that's he's, slightly more important <laughs> he sounds very unhappy actually he's dealing with it pretty well i mean like he's being pretty philosophical about it but that sucks that yeah, does not sound hit. fun he, he basically said he's surrounded by trees and they're they were cutting him out uh that sucks, when man. he texted us earlier so we'll get started <laughs> week zero is in the books the regular season is upon us finally you know thank oh, god, god. And this week, it seems like the top 25 is serving cupcakes. I know that's pretty standard for the oh, first yeah. couple of weeks. But uh, now all we need is a clown and some balloon animals, and we've got the circus in town. <laughs> Welcome back, Trash Talkers, to another college football roundtable. If you prefer, we call it Ring Knocker Radio. This is actually a heavy Ring Knocker Radio right now because we have no NCO. So, like, you get three West Pointers. So if you We're going to mess this up, guys. <laughs> this doesn't end yeah. well. Yeah, all we need is one more lieutenant, and then we'll all be walking in different directions. But I'm your host, Rob, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. We got Dano Icabesa coming to you live out of Coastal Connecticut, and Dan Robinson coming from the great state of Virginia. So, guys, Commonwealth, usually start man. To... It's a Commonwealth. Oh. <laughs> <Be> careful. <laughs> they hurt you out here, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, clearly. Clearly. Like, I'm going to get kidnapped by the militia later, so <laughs> that's not going to end well. It's like, we won't be doing any drives through Charlottesville, so I'll put a pin on that. Anyway, I got hit so many times I moved here, Rob. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no no worries. So, uh, what are you guys going to uh, – what did you guys end up watching this weekend? I personally – I watched the Navy game oh, and uh, – kind of chuckled the whole time as the brutality happened. I, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. I thought like Navy would at least like put some points on the board. I don't, I don't know if the field goal is anything other than like jacking up the, the <clears throat> Notre Dame defense. So they don't get the helmet sticker for the shutout. <laughs> I think they still, <laughs> you know, I think they still win on the yardage thing, but uh, you know, Thankfully for Navy, Notre Dame doesn't wear helmet stickers, so it doesn't matter anyway, but uh, defensively, like, I don't know. My question is, is Notre Dame good or was Navy just that bad? I have I have a thought, but we'll save it for a minute. We, as you know, we moved both my kids into college on Thursday. So we drove from the house up to Clark University in Worcester, Mass. And then from there up to the University of Vermont, which is not next door and moved in both kids. So by the time we finished with all that, it was like eight o'clock at night. Everybody was tired end up staying at a, a little ski lodge up in Vermont. So anyway, I listened to Navy Notre Dame as I was driving home from Worcester from where I cached my car in a random parking lot. Uh, and then I caught Ohio at uh, San Diego State and then UMass at New Mexico. Actually went full dual screen to catch both games <laughs> on uh, on Saturday. It was, it was pretty nice. Let me tell you, Navy Notre Dame saved me as I'm driving back. Oh, God, what a drive. That was just such a long day. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Dano, how about you? Did you watch it? I was, I was torn, man, because you're watching Navy get beat is always fun. But I think the problem I see is, you know, I'm becoming an old man looking at the NIL and all this stuff going and the no cut blocks. I'm like, I'm wondering how much that's going <laughs> to blow back on the rest of the service academies. You know what I mean? The rules changes. and It's it's sad to see. You know what I mean? It, it's I don't know if that's indicative of where it's going or 
if Nate or to your point, Notre Dame's all that good. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, statistic statistically, we all knew Sam Hartman was going to show up. Yeah, like that 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 was pretty much a guarantee. But and and Rob, I w- ended up watching Vanderbilt in Hawaii as I was laying in bed, and it was a good game. I was surprised. I was like, yeah, oh hey, hey. <laughs> this is actually the best game this weekend. <laughs> hey, I I told you that was that was one of my picks, but uh, I will gloat about that later. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I ended up watching, you know, the first half of the, the Hawaii Vanderbilt game. I was just like, okay, this isn't going to get any better. That stadium is wrecked. They need to fix that like yeah. ASAP. I don't think yeah. it'll be done by the end of the season. It's, it's an eyesore, no. but at least the football contest was better than the, the stadium. And then dude, UTEP, what is going on there? Like coach, you got two plays <laughs> in about 30 seconds, like, and you throw a fade. All right. I, I get it. You, you know, you take a shot at the end zone. Maybe right, but if you have a timeout, move it to the center of the field yeah. to give your kicker the best chance to have the easiest kick that he can get, and at least tie the game and give yourself a chance to win it in overtime. But you literally threw the game away with two yeah. really bad passes. My grandfather has the Texas Western jacket I got when he passed away. So when they won the NCAA champ, so I got a soft spot for Tep, But man, that was terrible. That was just <laughs> you're right. It's just yeah, hard to watch. It, it's just like. You know, there, there's sometimes, you know, sometimes a team just gets beat on the field. That was Navy yeah. against Notre Dame. Yeah. UTEP lost because of coaching, right? Like they had a chance to at least tie it and then go into overtime and roll the dice. And I get it. You've got a young kicker. I think he was a freshman. He missed a couple of kicks early in the game. But now you're really just telling this kid, like, if you thought he was a basket case beforehand, now you've just sealed the deal, <laughs> right? Like he's like, oh, you really can't kick. So we're not even going to give you a chance to try and tie the game, which yeah. super sucks. But, uh, yeah, that's enough about Saturday night. So we'll move into our sponsor. We have Dan Robinson actually here in the, you know, in the flesh, virtually, of course, uh, Buyer Barn. We have a new sponsor here. As for football, it's Buyer Barn. Found it by Dan. He's on the screen. For those of you guys that don't know him, <laughs> he ran a traditional farm co-op and uh, thought he could bring it into the 21st century. Buyer Barn helps by providing reduced animal issues through reduced animal and owner <laughs> contact. It reduces animal fraud through their buyer rating seller, buyer, bleh, buyer and rating, buyer and seller rating system. Slow down, Rob. All right. <laughs> a fully integrated auction platform with secure payments and convenience to buy and sell at your own time. And you get better market pricing because of the wider audience. Think eBay versus a yard sale. Somebody walks up to you, your yard sale says, Hey, I'll give you that for two bucks. You just want it gone. So you pay two bucks. Uh, Anyway, Buyer Barn is dedicated to helping the small farmers in America and is providing a special discount to military veterans who wish to assist them in the family farm revolution. Go to buyerbarn.com or email them at info at buyerbarn.com. There's also a little tab on the side of the As for Football website, and you can go there and be on the lookout for the Buyer Barn Cow of the Week. We were going to call it Jordan's Cow based off of this cow loan discussion that we had last season however yeah. it's more i was dying laughing on the tractor when you guys had that i gotta say it's nice seeing you guys i'm usually on the track i used to do it commuting to dc from mm. richmond but now i i'm on the tractor with <laughs> listening to podcasts so yeah, yeah so so either way look for it on the social media you'll see the buyer barn cow of the week so we'll showcase our junior players on the army football team uh dan if you don't mind, let's dive into the Service Academy standing, and I'm going to go check on my barking dog. <laughs> <laughs> so Army not only named their captains, they also named their starters for the game against uh, ULM. If you want to hear more, we're going to go into that at great detail on tomorrow's uh, As for Football, Army Football Show. Recording that tomorrow about 5.30 uh, p.m. for the firsties who are listening right now. Air Force opens uh, this week against FCS Robert Morris. I don't think that one's on regular TV. I think that's on uh, actual pay-per-view. And finally, uh, Navy has a bye week after getting drubbed. We talked about this a little. I personally thought their rushing offense looked okay but inconsistent, but their rushing defense got worked, and that was the best part of their team last year, and their passing offense is actively bad. Man, they got to figure some stuff out. And, you know, they're not going to survive the whole season on just the fullback trap and the option pitch. So, yo, that, that's that's they got some work to do up there in Annapolis. Uh, finally, Coast Guard opens against the University of New England with a 1 p.m. kickoff this weekend, while the Merchant Marine Academy takes on Western Connecticut State starting at noon. I got to say, when I look, saw Robert Morris, my dad told me one thing, Dano, one time, like uh, 
if you don't know a school's mascot, you can't get beat by them because that's just bad. <laughs> like, I had to look it up. <laughs> it's, it's the Romos. <laughs> so I didn't know that. Interesting. So, yeah. That's Learned very something. interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, that's fair. And, and to back to Dano's point, man, about Navy. Like, what's with the wing team, man? That's a high school offense. Like, seriously, I can show you films from my high school that ran the Delaware wing T offense. Like, that yeah. is not a joke. And it's like, I like it. Because again, you still get all the Mr. Rusty and triple option. It's kind of, it's got, basically it's an offset eye. Got that. You got split backs, makes it a little bit easier to pass. I'm concerned about the offense because that's not a, you know, like, hey, we're adding some new wrinkles. Are those new wrinkles? Like to go back to, you know, to go back to a playbook that was popular when I was in high school, that's 30 years backwards, not forwards. And the air raid has been out for a while. I fully hope that Navy transitions to the air raid and has the same woes that Army did when they did so. <laughs> and I will look forward to that for the rest of the season. But they got beat up pretty bad. I mean, their defense did not look good. I don't know how that's going to work. We'll see what happens. But uh, Joe is not here, so we will not have a Blue Falcon of the Week. We'll try and get him to text it to us uh, after he comes up for air. But he's got some stuff going on. So I'll dive into the, the AP Top 10. Uh, top 10, there's not going to be any movement. I don't think anything's going to move, even with Notre Dame, yeah. like mud hole stomp in Navy. Yeah, I don't think it's going to move for at least, uh, you know, this week unless there's an upset. So number one is the Georgia Bulldogs at UGA, Michigan Wolverines, Sands, uh, <laughs> Blue Pants. You got the Ohio State Buckeyes who have a quarterback controversy, believe it or not. They are uh, they got two potential starters on their team. That'll be interesting to see. Bama, how do you replace Bryce Young? It's Bama. They probably have six five-star quarterbacks in the quarterback room just to be honest lsu they're going to be a solid team they're a sleeper i think uh they're going to gain a lot of momentum based off of last year i think the kids are actually digging in on the new system particularly offensively and i think lsu might make some waves this year Do we hope got some you minor injuries early in the season on that one or? i mean <laughs> nothing major i don't want to hurt a kids I, I have uh i have very mixed feelings about it because lsu was the first school to recruit me at a time that i really like just emotionally had gotten beat up by my parents for not having any offers so i will always be grateful to them like you have no idea so i you know yeah yeah and then you got ufc like usc like they're trying to do their their campaign i think uh you know caleb williams is a pick fumble or loss away from being knocked out of the top spot for mm. the uh, heisman trophy and i've got some other stuff down later in the the outline to talk about penn state university is that going to last? I mean, Penn State is always in the top 10 and they play well and then they run into uh, either Michigan or an Ohio State and they fall out of the top 10 or then they just get completely walloped and blindsided by like Michigan State and it completely changes the whole plus, scope of their season. Plus when the Big 10 becomes the Big 20 next year, it might be yeah. even tougher for them. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have no idea. Like, I don't want to be the person that has yeah. to set those games with the new with the new schedule. Florida State is number eight. You've got Clemson at number nine and the University of Washington. I think UW basically replaced uh, TCU. I think uh, Penix is going to come back and he's a much better quarterback than uh, than what we've seen coming out of there in a while. But uh, again, not a lot of movement. I think uh, we'll see some shakeups probably week two or week three. I think the top 10 will stay the same unless somebody loses or, you know, edges one of the uh, cupcake teams early in the season. If it's a closer game than the expert think, I think mean, things might shift. But uh, I will say this. I don't think Notre Dame is going to get much of a bump for crushing Navy on national television, but uh, they did win for pride. And they're, they're, And one other point on that game, and we will move on, is what was with the puke green warm-ups in the suits and stuff? Like, that was – like, like dude, I, I get it. Like you got name, image, and likeness, bro. You don't have to buy an ugly suit like that and wear it, <laughs> wear it on your walkout because it was not cool. But uh, other than that, let's talk about the ACC for a minute. Who are you watching in the ACC? And like, we're, you know, normally we talk a lot about the Big Ten. We talk about the service academies both in FBS and FCS. But the ACC is quietly starting to gain a lot of momentum. Everybody's talking about it this season. Everybody thinks that Florida State is going to make a run in the playoffs this year do we think that's true and and do we even have any acc fans out there we got one person in the peanut gallery so hopefully they're an acc fan or at least watch the teams but uh dana what do you think about uh the acc 
well, we were texting about this earlier today. They have probably the most interesting opening week slate of any of the Power Five conferences. You got uh, NC State at UConn on Thursday, Louisville at Georgia Tech, which is just a conference game in week one, which is amazing. Uh, North Carolina at South Carolina, another amazing game for week one. LSU at Florida State. Are they for real? I mean, you know, ask me next week, I'll tell you. And finally, Clemson at Duke on Monday, which is also wild. So, yeah. um, yeah, man, I want to see the Vols. I know we're not really talking about the SEC right now, but I want to see the Vols, like, roll the Cavs and hush up some of these doubters. Not because I hate the Cavs, but just, you know, everybody's like, oh, Tennessee's not going to be that good. And then, you know, like we just said, Florida State, right, they put up a good showing against LSU, you know, squeak out a win at home. People will be going crazy. The line on the game's pretty close. And finally, you know, Drake May's back in North Carolina going to South Carolina. Like that's a really, really interesting game early in the yeah. season. Yeah, so much so that that's actually the site for college game day. Yeah. And I was looking at it, and I was like, man, like I really want to go to uh game day, but I am not getting up at freaking one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> driving two hours to, to Charlotte <laughs> to sit yeah. for three hours before the gates even open and the show records. So it's free to get in, but you got to get in. And so in order to get there, mm -hmm. you got to spend a few hours earlier on the on the take. I would love to see yeah. college game day live. But uh, I don't know. For me, look, let's just be honest. I'm not sure. If, I, I don't even know if I like the, the ACC anymore. I used to I, like it. Man, you know I, I mean? I've have, and Rob, you're probably in the same boat since moving to Virginia. I just, ACC's on everywhere here. And it's, <laughs> there's never any decent games near the end of the season. You know, and the yeah. one I will watch, though, this week, and not to interrupt if you had something there, Rob, but I was going to say, watch Virginia Tech at ODU, man. They ODU's yeah. beat this. If you're a degenerate gambler, they beat the spread. I think last four years they played in AC. They're four and zero against ACC on the spread, and I think they beat Virginia Tech. But they weren't in Blacksburg; they were home. But yeah, and the spread's only like six points, I think, on it. It's nothing yeah. on Virginia Tech ODU. So yeah, that, that's crazy. That's, that's like, gonna be an interesting game. Yeah. yeah, that's actually that's actually a line that might might be worth watching but yeah. uh, for me like i said not really sure about that that yeah. acc like like there's been moments where i've watched like when, when lamar jackson was qb1 at you know at louisville like everybody was watching that guy that guy's incredible like who doesn't want to watch that you know i think i will watch more for individual players than mm -hmm. i will for the league itself you know i think the only change that might draw a little bit more attention to the acc particularly with all the tv stuff that's going on is if notre dame moved in there permanently i think they did it for the pandemic which was good for them as far as being able to have a season. But I think, you know, long-term for the longevity of the program with that television contract that they have, like if somehow the ACC, you know, upper uppity ups can convince Notre Dame to come over, that's hardcore television contract with in, in, well, NBC for years. I know they got you that lock-in contract with ACC, but my thing is, <clears throat> Looking at, I, I'm an Oklahoma fan, man. I didn't see it coming until the talk started for TV with the Big 12. So, I'm I'm wondering what the pressure is on Clemson and Florida State to go to the SEC at some point. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the money's going to be good. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like it's rough if we, if we go if we we go to a Power Three yeah. and the Power yeah. Five ish is still there you know for notre dame that's their fastest path to get to yeah. the playoff right if you're a conference champion in the acc that gives you a chance to pop into the eight the 18th yeah. playoff like but yeah. as an independent mm, i don't know yeah. if you think of it as a broadcast rights collective though notre dame has a hell of a sweet deal with nbc yeah, i mean it's they like they're yeah. a one team broadcast rights collective and they have the national fan base to actually back that up so um, I don't know what the money is or, like on a year over year really. basis, but it that they're the only current independent that it's like, do we really need yeah. to do something different? Cause this is working. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't disagree with you on that, Dan. <sighs> I just think that would be the only thing that would make like the ACC competition a little bit more interesting to me, because then you have two large powerhouse yeah. teams that are really, you know, fighting for that recruiting time. Cause you get the, t they already have the TV time. So how do I recruit in a region? That's close, and they're yeah. ACC for basketball. You know what I mean. Well, how so much money's, how much money's flowing into that region with the Big Ten, right? I mean, yeah. it's 
Yeah, because you still got Maryland that's getting fringe dollars from the Big Ten. So <laughs> Rutgers, okay. Rutgers and yeah. Maryland, man. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, like do, do they even have out like champs? <laughs> yeah, do they even have a football team? You know, I don't even know. But uh, you know, one of the things that I also notice about that ACC that may get me to watch is Drake May. You know, like this kid yeah. came back. You know, all the confusion and the craziness in the offseason. Is he leaving? Is he not leaving? You know, the kid decided to stay, which is great, but. You know, I think he's sitting there licking his chops and and quietly, he probably won't say it out loud, but deep down inside, he's like, man, please let Caleb Williams have a bad game or have him lose, because that's going to be the difference between winning and losing. And like I still to 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 this day, you know, credit to Caleb Williams for being an outstanding player. But I find it hard to believe that a team that wasn't undefeated had the Heisman Trophy winner on it. You know, I mean, that's kind of been the staple for quarterbacks. Like if you run the table in your conference you're in the driver's seat for winning. You know, that was a comment about CJ Stroud. Well, he's a great quarterback, but he didn't win. He lost to Michigan. Right. So mm. at some point, when does that count for like, are we, you know, are we doing charity for the PAC 12 because we knew this breakup was happening this season, you know, to put some eyeballs over there, like, Hey, Caleb Williams is the Heisman trophy guy. And he's trying to go for two. I don't know. I mean, the storyline kind of plays out that way, but it just, it's just interesting, you know, to see a guy win the Heisman after losing, you know, to his rival, and then they blew that bowl game in a in a horrible fashion. And then again, FSU. We talked about this. We're going to beat this horse to death. But the last point is, like, are they for real? We'll see come Saturday because they're playing LSU. Like, that's going to be a huge game, and I think that's probably going to be the marquee matchup this week, in my opinion. But we'll pass it over to Dan to, to talk about Craig Oxane. Yeah, man. Thank you. Well, as you know, Craig Oxane is the other sponsor of this show. Uh, he is the vice president of residential lending for Draper and Kramer in Chicago, a member of the West Point class of 1994, licensed to lend in all 50 states, one of the biggest VA lenders in the country. Craig's going to give you the best deal he can, super competitive rates. Guys, this mortgage process is confusing as it can be. Rates are moving all over the place. Now is not the time to make a deal with some clown who's just trying to make a buck off you. You know, deal with somebody who cares, who's going to be straight with you, who's who's not just some mindless big box bank or a uh, mindless website who's going to bury you in fine print. Um, this is how the West Point Network functions. Craig is helping us stay in business here at Azure Football, and we are trying to introduce you to the guy who can give you the best deal on a mortgage that we can. Plus, Craig doesn't charge lender's fees for veterans. That's a savings of like 1300 bucks. That's a lot of money. Um, so Craig Oxane, vice president of residential lending, check him out. His link is on our website. Just go to Ezra football, click it, fill out a quick questionnaire. You'd be talking to that guy in a couple of hours. It couldn't be easier. Thanks, Dan. All right, let's roll up our sleeves. Let's talk games of the week. We got a full boat of games this week and there are a lot of them and they start on Thursday this week, which is awesome because we're going into the long weekend. So you might as well enjoy some football. If you got Friday off, you can stay mm -hmm. up late and have a couple beers, but, mm -hmm. uh, Starting on Thursday, a big only a ranked matchup is Utah at Florida. I think later on in the season, maybe we would care <laughs> right now. I don't know. Utah usually starts off pretty strong, and Florida gets better as the season goes on. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with those guys. Uh, you got North Carolina State and UConn. I know Dan will be watching that one. Nebraska at Minnesota. That may be an interesting game. I don't know, Old P.J. Flex, see if he can pull it together against the new Nebraska head coach. I mean, like, they got to get better. They kick Scott Frost out. They had the hometown hero, but, like, what's the deal with that? You know, and then, of course, uh, that's really it for, for Thursday night. Dano, uh, I kind of figured you'll be watching UConn and NC State, but what about you, Mr. Robinson? What I'm, I'm going to be watching UCF, UCF, man. I've got to. i got two sisters that graduated mm -hmm. there. One One's married to a coach. He's crew coach but NCA crew <laughs> coach and the other one are rabid fans and the other thing being an Oklahoma fan this is a weird season the big 12 so I I hear arguments all the time about schools that could come in and beat any school in a big conference and I think it's interesting to watch these schools enter into these bigger conferences because you get beat up every week so I, I'm watching UCF this season just to see Kent State's not going to be much of a challenge I don't think but it'll be interesting to watch them through the season going forward so yeah, I think, but I don't remember the record of the Golden Flashes. They they had flashes of brilliance, yeah. pun intended, yeah. last season. They did pretty well, and I think I know that they were close to the end, yeah. uh, looking good towards the end of the season. But and UCF know. is hot and cold, so you know they get yeah. they get streaks well, too. So you know, one of yeah. one of the one of the funniest jokes ever is like the UCF guy that was like, "Oh yeah, I got my 2017 trophy in the in the trunk." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, 
<laughs> you don't, but well, nice you know what it stands it. for, right? My sisters all went there. You can't finish. So too, <laughs> there's, there's too much stuff going on in Orlando, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't pay attention to anything. No. All right, so moving on, moving on to Friday, uh, you've got. Central Michigan and Michigan State. Again, that one's an early one, but I know Joe will probably be watching that one because his little brother is playing. And then you've got Missouri wow. State and Kansas. Like, can Kansas return to form? I mean, they're, you know, starting QB1 had that pretty significant injury last year that kind of took him out right before the, the K State game. And so they never really recovered after he got injured. Uh, Stanford and Hawaii. Hey, can Hawaii pull one off? Not against Stanford, I don't think. But, uh, Friday slate, what do you guys got? Uh, I'm probably not going to be watching too much. If I do, it will probably be Georgia Tech and Louisville. Yeah, Georgia Tech, Louisville. I mean, that's None of this really speaks to me. I wish they would put Stanford at Hawaii on it at a time that isn't, you know, midnight. <laughs> but what can <laughs> you do? Yeah. You know, uh, Pac-12 after dark, man, they're still not getting rid of that moniker, even mm. though the, the whole league is falling apart. And that's what? part of the reason why everybody's doing it. They struggling to get broadcast rights is because yeah. you know it, I think the it's East a, Coast, which is where a lot of people live, for better or worse, can't effectively can't watch these games unless you're yeah. a night owl in a way that most fifty year old men just are not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, uh, like, and like, you see the argument between the the Big Ten and the and the uh, SEC commissioners right now because the big the Big Ten saying we stretch across the country, and the yeah. SEC says we're we're regionally intact. So I think. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to help USC to be going to Rutgers you know, once a yeah, year. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, I mean, that, that it, it's almost arguing in the absurdum. You know, like, hey, look, I got to travel three hours to the East Coast just to get enough TV time to make it matter. You know, and then the argument for argument's sake is like, hey, you guys had the guy with one Heisman Trophy last year. So why would we, you know, upset the apple cart to make that happen? And, and again, it's – we know it's NIL. You know it's NIL money. It's NIL money. Or it's money, just – it's – it's it's being able to make the most compelling argument for a kid that wants to go to the pros, right? You ever seen the articles on Hawaii? I mean, their budget is crazy. I think they got an exception from the NCAA on travel budget because yeah, I mean, just think about it, every week they got to travel somewhere or every other week. Yeah, yeah so like, it's nuts, insanity, yeah. insanity. Well, and that's part of the reason why they have week zero. So whoever plays yeah. Hawaii in week zero actually gets a little extra cushion and an additional home game because of that because of the, the the travel time required. All right, moving into Saturday, this is where, you know, the big money is starting to happen. So in the early kicks, early kickoff, uh, ranked matchup, Tennessee versus Virginia. I think that's going to be probably the game to watch in the early in the early hours. You got Utah State and Iowa. Can Utah State pick up where they left off last year? Mm. Don't know. Iowa is usually a good team. If you're playing at Iowa during the day, better chance of winning than you do in the evening. Mm. You know, something about the stadium at night that kind of throws teams off. And then uh, you've got Arkansas State and Oklahoma. Like, way to line up the powder puff, kid. Hey, and, hey, uh, hey. They're in the SEC now. You got to have those powder puff weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> they're going, they got to warm up for it, man. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 legit, I legitimately think that Arkansas State is going to get punched in the mouth. Actually, the early game, the early game window that I would probably watch for sure, I'm going to watch Colorado and TCU, man. I'm banking on Coach Prime this year. I think TCU got, you know, the they got gypped in the rankings they should have been in the top 10 yeah. you know max duggan was you know was a huge part of the team but he wasn't the only person yeah. on the team well okay yeah, he's yeah i'm surprised the spread that's on that TV game is crazy about Oklahoma. Uh, by the way I'm, I'm looking that up right now but yeah the, the spread on that that tcu game is is crazy um yeah. tcu is favored by some absurd amount of money yeah I think it's like 20 points 20 they got 20 prime points time, yeah. don't they that's yeah. why it's yeah. getting tv coverage <laughs> yeah, yeah but i mean it's he, you know it's a completely different team like that yeah. colorado team is going to field zero players from last year's team yeah it's yeah. it's a new organization from scratch it's not yeah. gonna be pretty yeah uh like I don't know, I'm 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 banking on Coach Prime, and, and I'll I'll be honest with you, I grew up watching. You know, I'm I'm Eric oh, yeah. Bieniemy fan. I'm an Eric Bieniemy fan from way back in the day when Colorado actually was good. You know, and that yeah. was a long, 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 long time ago. So you know, one, I want to see Colorado come back and make a comeback. But the other piece of it is, it's like, hey, there's an interesting story there. Uh, you know, between you know which team can recover the quickest. Is it going to be Colorado? Is it going to be TCU? I think TCU is good. I don't think TCU is 20 points good. Uh, you've got East Carolina and Michigan. Uh, that's going to be an interesting game at the big house. East Carolina is surprisingly tough. Do not be surprised if that game is a lot closer than uh, the line. Uh, if I was cursing you right now. Yeah, but hey, <laughs> I would take the spread on that one. No joke. 
you know, I would I would take ECU to cover if I was a betting man. Uh, you've got Mercer at Ole Miss at two. So this is the early afternoon kicks. You got Portland State and Oregon at three. You got I- Ohio State and Indiana. Like, why even, you know, televise these games? Tennessee State at Notre Dame. Why? Like, that's two powder puffs in a row. Like, Notre Dame, you're not making your case to go to the national championship or even into the playoffs when you're playing two teams that you can handily beat. You got Texas and Rice. That's going to be – like, hey, let's see how many touchdowns Quinn Ewers can throw. Maybe an NCAA record. <laughs> Boise State and Washington at 330. You got Buffalo and Wisconsin. I think that'll be an interesting game because that'll be the first time with uh, Luke Fickle as the head coach of the team and because he moved over from Cincinnati over to Wisconsin. And then the only other highlight, again, you got early evening kick is UT Martin versus Georgia. Why? You know, this is going to be like yeah. – It'll it'll be like who's who on the backup squad for Georgia is going to show up and score some points. Hey, hey man, listen, UT Martin has got an athletic department to fund. Let them make their money. Yeah. It's hard to make money in this country. Yeah, uh, <laughs> true true statement. Yeah, uh, Southeast Missouri and K State at seven. New Mexico and Texas A and M at seven. Uh, the game that uh, I know I will be watching for sure is going to be Army at ULM. Uh, take Army to freaking beat the brakes off of these dudes. I just don't think ULM is going to have much for them. Uh, not a whole lot of positive commentary coming out of their their front office either. Like I just don't see anything. And the fact that you're trolling uh, James from Brigade Review on Twitter to try and get insights to the new Army offense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bro, you got some work to do. Like I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, t- I, I'm just calling it like I see it. You got West Virginia and Penn State. That's probably going to be the best matchup of the early evening game. So if you're not watching Army or Army takes – Firm control of that game. I would watch West Virginia, Penn State. That's uh, almost uh, the backyard brawl ish. You know, that, light. that game was electric last year. Yeah, it was really good. Then you've got uh, North Carolina and South Carolina, number 21 versus South Carolina. Hey, can Spencer Radler like play season spoiler again? <laughs> I mean, that's literally what that guy does. Like, he is yeah. the season spoiler for a lot of folks. And then uh, the late game. So, for those of you guys that want to stay up on the left coast, you've got uh, Western Illinois and New Mexico State. Northern Arizona and Arizona, Idaho and San Diego State, and then you've got Coastal traveling all the way out to UCLA. Woo! They're going to get worked. Is, I'm sorry. Yeah. They're going to get yeah. worked. Yeah, well, yeah. and again, those types, of ga- those types of games, like you said, Dan, are great for making money, but uh, yeah. not so great for preserving your team early in the season. And, yeah. and you're risking, a, a like, hey, if Grayson McCall gets hurt, or they re-aggravate that shoulder. That changes the entire complexion of Coastal Carolina season for the rest of the year. Uh, moving on to Sunday, God, hard to hard to believe that I'm saying that, that there's Sunday football uh, in college. But uh, you've got number 18 Oregon and San Jose State. Then you've got LSU and Florida State. Like I think if you have a television, you're going to be watching that game. Uh, like if not, you're going to have a radio and an antenna trying to you know figure out the best way to tune in on that one. Uh, you've got Clemson and Duke. There are still tickets uh, available for that uh, game. That's, a, so that's Monday night football. Clemson yeah, if, at Duke is, Monday, yeah. is what passes for Monday night football Labor yeah. Day weekend. Yeah, for sure. And if you're a fan of Clemson or Duke, like tickets are like 55 yeah. bucks. Mm-hmm. But like if you've ever watched a football game in a high school stadium outside of being in high school, that's what Duke is. Unfortunately, their stadium is really, really tiny. And, uh, you know, but you get good seats just about everywhere. So you pay 50 bucks, you can see the whole game. Like that's the, you know, that's the upside of it. But uh, before we get to weekly locks, uh, what do you guys think about uh, the scheduling? You know, for me, it's like I, I don't like cupcake games early in the season. I think just because of the gravity of everything else, you put these guys, you know, you put these power five schools against cupcake schools and they beat them up really badly, you know, yeah. just because they have to. Right. Because well, It's all about establishing yeah. dominance for the pecking order of the, the AP. Well, well Nick, Nick Saban said it once that he thought, you know, they were complaining about the SEC schedule. They do it usually in the middle, but he said, you know, until somebody comes up with a rule like the NFL where power fives have to play other power fives out of conference games, which I thought was a great idea. He said, I'm not going to do it. So there's no one said, I would rather play it early if you're the big school, you know, <laughs> and pay that money to warm up on them. But I don't know. It, I don't think it's good anytime, Rob. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to play Alabama week seven either. Yeah. If I'm yeah, I, at Liberty or, yeah. I, I mean, as a, as an organization, I understand, I understand yeah. the math behind it, Yeah, but from the, you know, physical protection of your players, I think oh, 100%. not, not putting those guys in jeopardy because again, 
you know, coming out the gate, dudes are a lot more hungry that first week. And so they play a lot more aggressively and, and, you know, cause people don't have injuries or not nicked up. So they may play a little bit harder in those early weeks, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's move on I, to, I will say one other thing, Rob, I know you guys right. covered this last week, so I don't want to redo it, but man, looking at the, looking at the networks, these things are on. <laughs> I'm like, good night. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like... you're, you're seeing the, you're seeing the invasion of, of streaming service. And I know that, SSEN. Like, I'm like, what yeah. is that? I gotta go yeah. look that thing up. Yeah. I know that, that uh, like James had talked about that last yeah. week, you know, so you've got yeah. the mountain West network, you've got, uh, a lot of games on ESPN Plus, which you know, if you're behind, I hope, Carol, I hope the guy yeah. gets a better iPhone than he did against Army in Coastal Carolina last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Start filming it, man. That was yeah, horrible. Like, yeah, that like that's the thing. Like ESPN Plus, you're you're getting you know the Ocho team that's going to be yeah. calling the game as well as the camera crew. And, and yeah. again, it it is what it is. One of the surprising things is like the PAC 12 network. Again, if you guys are trying to maintain your footprint and do what you yeah. can, like don't put your network on a streaming service. The only way, you know, the only way that you're going to be able to, to, to watch the PAC 12 is if you get Fubo or whatever, Fobo TV yeah. or whatever it is. Like I, like I had to look it up to say like, Hey, well, yeah. you get, ain't watching any PAC 12 games, even if they're early in the evening. So you couldn't watch USC unless you're on the, the left coast anyway, or you have a massive, you know, 400, $500 freaking cable package and nobody wants to pay extra just for one channel to watch a bunch of teams that I really don't care about. But, uh, you know, you're seeing a lot of activity on like CBS is now partnered with Paramount plus, for their games for college football and believe it or not the big 10 has got something working with peacock so you're going to see big 10 games not only on abc cbs but you're also going to see them on peacock on your streaming service yeah and again it's annoying yeah it, it really is but at least it gives you options so the only the only upside about having like multiple streaming platforms that you can use is like it's easier to control with your remote <laughs> <laughs> when, you're, when you're using multiple screens, because then I can just log into that one channel and leave it there and then jump to the next one. But other yeah. than that, madness. All right, let's go into weekly locks. Weekly locks. Dano, you're nope. up. Uh, okay, so I have three and I almost took a fourth, but I didn't. But anyway, uh, I have UConn plus 14 and a half as a home underdog uh hosting as we said that nc state wolf pack this is a popular pro pick which is kind of what uh made me want to jump on it i think the game might be close overall it's a big big game for the huskies they've been advertising it locally you know come pack the rents which is rensselaer stadium utsa at houston over 60.5 points um you know what can you say that that game's always a barn burner and uh we didn't mention that one but it's it's on uh uh, Fox Sports 1, pretty interesting game if you get bored with some of the Cupcake games. And finally, I, I hesitate to say this, but Army at ULM over 47 and a half. I think Army might put up 47 and a half if you want to know the truth. Um, and when, like I said, I was really tempted to take South Carolina getting two and a half at home against North Carolina, but let's just stick to three picks. That was my fourth. All right. Wow. That's pretty deep. Uh, I got Joe's info. So Joe texted me over. He's calling Michigan to hit the over 51 and a half. Final score is going to be uh, 49 13 against uh, East Carolina University. That's a fair pick. Uh, I think e ECU will play them a lot tougher. ECU is always one of those sneakily quiet teams. And they, again, they don't get a lot of pub because of the conference they're in. They were pretty damn good last year and, uh, you know, took Navy down to the wire, took a a couple teams down to the wire last year. So I'll be surprised to see if uh, they don't sock Michigan in the nose a little bit. And is Michigan going to make any changes potentially with uh, an interim head coach? You know, as much as, as much as I don't want to talk about this and dive too deep into it, but the bottom line is how did Jim Harbaugh get in trouble for something that like not everybody was sure about, you know, so he, he's sitting for three games and, the last time we saw this, and, and Joe sent it out in the text, but uh, last time we saw this was when uh, assistant coach did some uh, nefarious things to his spouse, and then it was covered up by Urban Meyer. And the only thing that kind of came out of that was uh, Ryan Day got his live uh, audition for the head coaching position <laughs> in those three games that uh, Urban was out. So are we going to see something similar at Michigan? Is this a test to uh, 
figure out who's going to be the next guy in the in the seat at Michigan, or you know, is this just you know an anomaly that uh, had to get taken care of? All right, so moving on to my picks. For the record, I hit both of mine last week. You guys said I was crazy taking Hawaii to cover, but they did. <laughs> so, I'm, but like I said, I'm rolling with Coach Prime this week. I don't think that uh, TCU's offense is going to be that potent without uh, Max Duggan. I mean, their backup was good, but not Max Duggan good. So I think 20.5 is not enough. I'm expecting that line probably to drop Wednesday or Thursday based off of uh, media. I think, you know, this might be the the game where emotion wins out over skill. I think uh, Coach Prime has got those guys ready to go, and I think they're going to play hard. And I I don't think that they're gonna accept you know losing by twenty points and and I just don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, take uh, OSU, uh, take the over of OSU against Indiana fifty nine. I think uh, Indiana it'll score at least ten in garbage time. That's what normally happens with Ohio State. They kind of come out play weird the first half, third quarter they'll blow the doors out. You know you're gonna see at least two to three touchdown receptions from Marvin Harrison Jr. and then. Uh, you know, garbage time with the backups, they'll score a couple points. And then uh, take the under on Wisconsin and Buffalo. I think it'll be under, you know, overall. Luke Fickle has some big shoes to fill, but I I just don't think the offense is going to be that potent coming out of the gate. Uh, I'm not brave enough to hit the spread. I think uh, Buffalo will score more than enough to cover 27, but I think it's within the realm of the possible for them to cover while still hitting the over on that one. But uh, other than that, we will move on to the bandwagon update because we're almost at the end of the show. If you are not registered, you still have three days to register for bandwagon fantasy sports. Right now, Dano is on top. Matt is in second. And there is a five-way tie for third and like a six-way tie for fourth. And so you're muted, Dano. Not only am I on top, I'm up 10, 6, and then 2 is in third place. So – I'm up by four points, and I also hit both my picks last week. So nice, <laughs> you guys. And, and nobody thought uh, San Diego State was going to cover, but they did. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting. I'm actually liking the bandwagon sports because I don't have to do much with it. I just got to <laughs> check the scores, and if things aren't going well, I make some trades. <laughs> but uh, other than that, you still have time to sign up. Uh, I know that uh, you know things are going to change i think there'll be a shake up uh those who pick teams for week 0 actually are at advantage and it looks like that's what dano did to jump <laughs> out points. early or yeah. 10 points yeah. i had to trade out of three positions today absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh smart move on his part you know take advantage of the the early games but uh easy to do uh, this brings us to the end of the college football roundtable surprisingly like it's gone pretty quick it's just like the off season we are at college football for real <laughs> This week, uh, Army football show will be recorded tomorrow. Today is Monday, the 28th, so we'll do the Army football show tomorrow. If not, uh, make sure that you're checking us out at Ask for Football for both your Army and your college football coverage. If you haven't signed up for the Bandwagon Fantasy Sports League, you have until September the 1st to do that. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming on. We had a couple guys from the Peanut Gallery jump in and jump out. So for those of you guys that popped in, we appreciate you coming on the show. Dan, as always, great to have you here at – that's Robinson. Not, not <laughs> yeah, I'm always Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, because Dano, Dano is always here. Hey, if you haven't done it, check out buyerbarn.com. Still thinking goat roast. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it at uh, the stadium, though. Good grief, because all oh. the tickets are sold out for Army Navy this year. Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe you could uh, auction off your uh, – You just need a parking Navy. spot for a goat, goat roast. You don't need to go in. <laughs> 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 yeah, that – Fair, fair point. So if you guys are still looking to uh, roast a goat in the freezing uh, northwest or northeast, uh, like please feel free. Buyerbarn.com is out there. Uh, take a look and see if there's something that you want to buy. They do everything but horses on buyerbarn.com. <laughs> All right, folks, this has been your college football roundtable. I am Rob, your host, the angry colonel calling out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. We got Dano E. Cabeza coming out of coastal Connecticut and from the Commonwealth of virginia <laughs> dan robinson hey thanks you guys for, for checking us out this week and we'll talk to you guys next time thanks b-u-l-m beat them <laughs> all right I'll, i will cut this together thanks for listening to the ask for football college football round table tune in next week as the aff team brings you more hot takes and
college football analysis. We'd like to thank our sponsor, BuyerBarn.com. BuyerBarn.com is the world's first platform to perform online auctions and sales for farm animals. BuyerBarn.com is dedicated to helping small farmers in America and are extending a special discount to military veterans who want to help in the revolution of the family farm. Go to BuyerBarn.com forward slash military. That's BuyerBarn.com, B-Y-R-E-B-A-R-N.com to learn more and to get started or email them at info at BuyerBarn.com. Thanks again for listening to Ask for Football College Football Roundtable and as always, Beat Navy.